how to use Trello effectively so that you can take your productivity to a whole new level. By the end of this video, you're gonna discover that it doesn't matter if you wanna utilize this for personal productivity, whether you wanna utilize this to manage teams as part of your business, I'm gonna be showing you how I utilize it for both. This has given me my sanity, it's given me my time, and it's taken my productivity levels to a whole new level. And by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to understand really from a tactical standpoint, how do you actually do it, as well as from execution. How should the boards look like? How should you create checklists? How do you create these SOPs and processes to help you streamline and automate your work as much as possible, but also at the same time to help you increase your productivity levels so that now you're moving from tactical to strategic. How do you actually utilize Trello to work on your business rather than in your business. Mm. Hey, everybody, this is Ping Jun here. And to kind of start this session off, the way I think about Trello is kind of like Lego. Think of it as like when you walk into a Lego store, chances are there's this life-size Star Wars figurine. And it could be the case that a Lego staff pass you all of the materials that's required to build this life-size Star Wars figurine. But chances are you and I, we won't be able to do it Unless we understand exactly, we have the whole blueprint, the SOPs that show us step by step, move by move on what to do. I feel that Trello's the same way. A person can have Trello, but utilizing Trello the right way is a totally different thing. When I talk about Trello, understand that these key principles can actually be applied in any of these type of project management softwares. And before we dive into the boards, think about a manufacturing process in an assembly line. Now, in an assembly line, if a person wanted to manufacture a car or, or anything for that matter, there's three main steps, right? And the first step is where you load in the raw materials. That is when this raw materials goes through the loading bay and this now goes into the assembly line and now it is ready to be manufactured to be built and finally step number three when it's completed what happens that is when it goes into storage what if right now that's what we want to do we want to manufacture something maybe it's a social media post maybe it's launching a new product whether big small we want to manufacture this idea and realize it so that it becomes real what if we can actually utilize this in trello it could be the case you have 76 different things in your to-do list but what if we could systematically load it up manufacture this idea so whether you want to do it yourself or outsource it or have a team member do it. And after that, it needs to be stored somewhere so that at any given point in time, you can always check in, see the optics from a bird's eye perspective. So that brings us to how a software tool like Trello is designed. In a second, when I log in, the first thing that they have is they have a board. Now, what does a board look like in Trello? When, when you create this free account, what you're going to realize is that there are many different boards. A board could be a department. It could be a product. It could be a main umbrella. So for me, I have got admin and finance. I've got customer support. I've got my different events. I've got my product names, sales, social media, right? all my different funnels. But that's the first thing. Okay, now that brings us to number two. When I go into the board, the next thing happens is that each board will have a list. So if I were to go into Trello right now, and if I were to go into say, this thing called a capture board, which I'll talk about in a second. If I were to go to capture board, you will see that right now, this is a list. See, I've got, I've got this list over here. I have these, so like social media, million dollar ads, performance ads, all these are different lists within the board. So a board is just a department or product. And within this list, you'll notice finally, there's this thing called, which is number three, a card. Okay, that's, that's pretty much how Trello is laid out. With this in mind, how do you actually apply this into this? The way to load and manufacture and store is then if I were to go into these individual boards, you're gonna realize that if I were to go to these different boards, notice that they're all labeled one, two, I've got a lot of different boards, okay? So different uh, teams will be in charge of different boards. So like I said, right, I've got like TikTok and Pinterest and my product names and my events. 
But ultimately, what I want to do is I'm numbering them based on whether it is, number one, loading the raw material. You want to delegate a specific task? You want to tell something what to do? You load it up into where all of the raw materials comes together, right? Does that make sense? Number two, remember, it is the assembly line. You're now manufacturing this idea. And number three, which we'll come to in a second, this is where you store stuff. It's completed and you want to store something. You want to store a checklist, a, pr a process, a template, testimonials that you get. This is when you store it all together so that you can easily find them in future. So for us, it could be clients that we work with. It could be our operations. So now each board, it's very clear exactly what it is. I like you to imagine that right now, you have an idea. And this idea is to get this video. So let's talk about this video. So this video is on how to create or utilize Trello effectively. Okay, so let's, let's say this is the name of this video, okay? And let's say I wanna brief my team member to have this video done. So what do I do? I go to Capture Board and perhaps I can go to social media and under social media, all I'm going to do is, oh, in fact, no, look, this YouTube channel. Okay, and I'll talk more about how to create a card. So right now, I want to be able to have my team take over this task after I shoot this video. I'll type in the title of this card, which is under the list of YouTube, which is under this first step, which is the, the loading bay, right? So let's call it how to use Trello effectively. But whatever, let's say this is the working title. When I create this card, every single time you create a card, which is a task, there are three main rules to follow. Okay, number one, the description must be self-explanatory. It needs to be the case when somebody sees the card title, they know exactly what they need to do, right? So if it's under YouTube, that's the title, it means that this is what needs to be done. This video needs to be completed, right? To render a video on how to utilize Trello effectively. The second rule, that you must have every single time is every single card, you must have only one person assigned. Now, why is that the case? Okay, so if I open it, you will see that I can add a member into this card. Okay, so these, these like my team members, right? The rule here is you can have only one person assigned to this. Here's why. So let's say if I add in my team member, Adri, in here, it means that Adri and Adri alone is going to see this task to its completion from start to end. Okay, now why do you want to have only one person? It is because in, in, in the corporate world, how do team leaders and bosses normally do it? They send an email out, they CC like three people, five people in your team, they put the brief in there, and then usually what happens? There's a sea of emails, and then when the task is not done and the boss says, so what happened? Why is it not done yet? It's the five people that CC in there. Peter is going to say, well, I thought Bell was on it. Bell, you were CC in the email. Bell, why didn't you get it done? Now Bell is going to point at the next person and says, well, John, I thought you were on it. You were CC in an email, right? Why, wasn't any, why didn't anything happen? And then John's going to say, what do you mean? Well, Priscilla was clearly CC in an email as well. So now it becomes this circle of finger pointing and, and, and blame, right? Now this takes care of that. This is so clear because now it just shows that this one person is responsible to see this task to its completion. Okay, so that's rule number two. That brings us to rule number three. Every single time you create a task in the form of a card, there must be a due date, right? Back to the whole corporate world, usually what happens when a task is not done and when a team leader, when a colleague asks, so why is it not done? Common response is, well, you didn't say when. I didn't know what the urgency was. I've got several other things on my plate right now and I'm busy. So I wasn't clear on how urgent this task was. Okay. So this third thing here, which is the due date, solves that problem. So going back to this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go here where it says due date. I'm going to click on due date. And now if I were to put in, say, whatever, 25th, notice how clear it's become. Okay. Now I've got a YouTube video on how to use Trello effectively with the team member, one team member assigned to it with a due date attached to this. Okay, so let's say I put this next week, right? So now it's so clear that this one task is gonna be managed by this person. So depending on how big your organization is, if it's two, three people, you could start off doing this yourself. So what I do is all these over here, 
I don't even have names and due dates assigned yet. Why? Because I don't need to do this. My team member is going to take this, my operations. It's an assembly line, right? Before they move it to step two, that's what the, the, the operations manager is going to do. But eventually know that that is what they would be doing. So I don't handle this anymore. They will assign somebody and they'll put a due date to it. And that is when they will move it to the next step. And by the way, my, my account is still on, on the free account. You don't really need the, let me just go back to boards. So what's gonna happen next? What's gonna happen next is the operations manager is going to move it to the next part of the assembly line. This is when they will move it to YouTube video, right? Because now it's in the capture board, which is like the loading bay. So now naturally the next thing that needs to happen is we need to move it to the second part of the assembly line, which is now the YouTube channel. So if I were to go to the YouTube channel, right now you will see that there's always these different lists. There's always not started, in progress, to review and like completed, right? What I would like you to notice is that Trello has made it so that it, it is like a, a flow. So let's say this video. So from a bird's eye perspective, I can always see what's happening in any department at any given time. If I wanna be able to see exactly the status of what's happening here in my YouTube channel, I do not have to ask this very commonly asked question, which is, what is the status? Is it done yet? Could you give me an update? Why? Because from a bird's eye view, when I go into that board, I can straight away see exactly what's happening with all of the tasks. I can see that over here, nobody's assigned yet. There's no due date. I can tell that over here, this is basically who's assigned to it. I can see exactly like this thing has been approved. There is six out of 16 things that is done. There's still 10 things that's not done. For this video, we have these different checklists, which we'll talk about in a second towards the end. So now it is very clear whenever a person's on a task, this is what needs to be done. There needs to be a thumbnail, there needs to be title and description, there needs to be timestamps, is the info card added, is the end screen in place, is there a subtitle, is the comments pin? Is the, has the email gone out, is there a blog post for it, have you repurposed it for Instagram? So every single time we create these different things, every task, there usually is some sort of process or a checklist attached to it. It is because there's a process already created for this, which we'll talk about in a second. If let's say that video on how to create the Trello video, which is this video right now, what my operations person would do is she would take the card and she would move this into this board. Remember, it's an assembly line now, and we are now moving it from not started to in progress. Now, once it has started, sometimes it could be the case that it might require somebody's approval, okay? So approval is the only time there's an exception to the rule where there can only be one person associated to the card. So going back to this example again, what happens if somebody needs to review this? So let's say the person's on this isn't sure about something. So let's say I want someone's feedback or, or my team wants my feedback. So they would just tag the person, so it would be Ping Jun, please give me your thoughts on ABC. So now they would save this and then they will actually tag me in here and then finally they will move this to for review. So there's two people in there. So now there's transparency. This tells everyone that nothing is going to happen because right now this thing is for review and is waiting on Peng Jun. So now again, this cuts down the issue of I thought I was waiting on you. It's like, what? What do you mean you were waiting on me? I was waiting on you, right? Now it's very clear. Everybody in the team in that department knows that this video here on how to sell high ticket coaching, consulting, and services, nothing's gonna happen until Ping Jun gives his feedback on this. Does that make sense? If I liked it, if I was the person that's supposed to approve it, I will move it to approve. If I don't like it, what do I say? I'd say very simply, please change X, Y, Z. I would move it back to in progress, right? So I'm, I'm literally pushing it back and now it's back to my team member again. This is how there's transparency and it makes, it allows everybody in the team 
to be a line. You're probably thinking, if that's the assembly line, then, then remember num what number three is? What is number three? Storage, right? What are you storing? You're storing some sort of finished product, a process, a template, a workflow. Now this, as a business owner, should be something you're, you should be obsessed about. How do you create it? How do you create systems, checklists, SOPs to ensure that your team succeeds? Okay, so remember, step number three is, is now the storage, right? So what, am, what are we storing? We are always creating different processes. So for example, inside social media, right? We have all these different social media checklists for YouTube. How do we create YouTube titles? How do we store it so that we know exactly the YouTube name, the keyword rich title? The example that I showed you earlier, notice that whenever a task is created, all they're really doing is they are copying these tasks that we do again and again and again within our organization. So for example, if it's something as simple as YouTube, we know that every single time we need to add our intro sizzle reel, we need to add an outro, we need to have caption, we need to have some sound effects, B-roll, we need to have a high-res thumbnail, we need to have info card, we need to have an end screen, we need to have a description, is the comment pin, all of that kind of stuff, right? And, and, and this is just one. We have like 200 plus different processes and checklists in our organization for all the different things that we do. Now, why is that the case? Because number one, that's when you can train people better. That's when you can empower them to take on responsibility because now there's clarity on what is expected of them. So even things like how to upload videos, head over to this page over here, look at the sheet, head over to this. So there's very, very clear direction so that even an intern could do it. So that even if we were to outsource it, that person would have all of the steps, right? Every single thing, there's a process for it. So whether it's repurposing a video on YouTube, whether it is optimizing a video, whether it is the analytics, whether it's launching a specific website. For, for me, there are a lot of things that we tend to do again and again on a monthly basis. So what do we do? We put it into a process. So for example, let's say like, we have this thing called the videos challenge. And every single month, this challenge, my team needs to do the same thing and again and again. So what do they do? They take, they go to the storage, they copy the entire list, which is all of the cards in here, so that when they click on this, they know exactly, okay, for this card, right? What is number one? The first thing that needs to happen is, so let's say, whatever, December 2020. Three days before a challenge, do this. Before the webinar starts, do this. After the webinar starts, do this. Update the sales page, the date and timer, integrate this thing. So now it's it's very, very clear. We have a checklist for everything that we do. We even have checklists for our meetings. So can you imagine if we kick something off, what happens? We literally copy this card, we duplicate this card, and, and, and it's like machine gun, right? It's like, okay guys, here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about the offer. When are we launching it? What's the affiliate center? What's the commission rate? Is there an order bump? Yes, it's gonna be thirty-seven dollars. What are the options pre presented? Uh, it's ninety-seven dollars upfront. Is there a trial? No. Is there a, what's the demo? What you know? Is there a discount? Is there an early bird? When's the launch date? All of that, so that it's purposeful. When you don't have systems and process, and if you have team members that's working together with you, here's what's really happening. Whether that step has got 63 steps or four steps or 12 steps or all these different tasks, what you're really doing is you are assuming that your team member or your colleague is able to execute these tasks that has got 63 steps associated to it from memory every single day. Wouldn't you agree that that would be a very unfair expectation of them? So if you are currently a team leader and if something wrong happens, something breaks, the first thing you gotta do is to take responsibility and ask yourself the question, did I put in the processes in place? Because if not, then it's on you, right? Because everybody wants to be successful. No team member wants to purposely screw things up. They don't wake up in the morning thinking, I wonder how I can f things up today. All right, let's do it. They all want to be successful. So the question is, did you put in the processes in place to ensure their success? If right now you don't have the business that you want, it's only because you haven't become the person that is required to run it. And processes is key. This is what I do to get my team. So I don't do this anymore. Initially, if you're a solopreneur, definitely that's what you want to build. But eventually, it's how you train your staff to create 
their own processes based on what it is that they do on a daily basis to help them become more productive. But let's talk about how this would relate to your personal productivity. So the way you do it is you have a separate board for your personal tasks. What it is that you do on a daily basis, same thing, you would have not started, in progress, completed. But the difference is this. So right now, I am in literally my personal board over here. And you can see that over here right now, not started this week, I've got all these different tasks in here. And this video right now is a video that we are doing that I'm working on. So let's say I just started my day and I'm thinking about what I should work on today. And rather than thinking about the 76 things that needs to be done, all I'm doing is I will take a look at all of the not started stuff and I will think about how do I can plan my day by kind of moving it into the not started. Now, another thing that you'll notice is, so I've got not started this week, today in progress, completed. Now, one of the things you also notice is I actually color code my tasks. Okay, now why is this important? What it does for me is it allows me to give me clarity on whether I'm working in my business or on my business. Okay, now let me explain. So you probably heard of the saying all the time, right? Which is the saying of you want to be working on your business from a high level strategic standpoint and not in your business. So how do you actually level up and work on the strategic side of things and not just the low level tactical? The way I think about it is kind of like being placed in the middle of a huge lake. And if you wanted to swim to the shore or get to the destination you want to go to, you really have two choices, right? You, you want to either kick to stay afloat. Now, what is, what is kicking, first of all? That would be the tactical. In business, what are the activities that is kicking that's required you to stay afloat. This would be like making sales, chasing for payment. This would be like customer support. Now what's gonna happen if you don't take care of customer support? Well, customers will get angry, they'll label you as a scammer, your company's reputation will take a hit, and before you know it, your company's drowning, right? Because you're not kicking. Same thing for sales. What's gonna happen if you're not collecting money from your clients? You're gonna have cash flow issues. So all these tasks, they are required, but it's also equally important to understand that if that's all that we do in our business, we're not moving, we're just kicking. Now, what are the tasks that is swimming to the shore? Now, that is the strategic moves. So in order to scale, there's no better way to be more productive than to be aware of the things that's keeping you busy every single day. To increase your personal productivity, just like how you would do it in a company, in a business, you would have all of your tasks laid out, right? So I know exactly what I want to accomplish, the three things, five things today. But the additional ones for your personal board is things like ideas. So sometimes you might have a brilliant idea, like, oh, that, that's an amazing thing. So before you forget, you just create a card under ideas and you just dump it in here. So every single time you're thinking about, I wonder what's an idea of mine that I wanted to do but I haven't done yet. Then you can take a look at all of your ideas. And then finally, you would have the final not started where it's, it's not urgent, right? So there's like three main not started. Not started this week, not started today, and then not started anytime, not urgent, okay? And then finally, completed, right? So notice that all I'm doing is Sometimes if I'm thinking, oh, I wonder what I can work on, I'll look at my ideas. I might take the idea, drag it to not start it. This is what I want to accomplish. So I might have like, you know, seven things over here. When I start my day, I'm taking a look at the things I want to accomplish. I move maybe three things. Okay, when I start on one, in progress. Remember, each different card, it's color coded now. Now, what are the color codes for you to be aware at the end of each month if you are working on things and how you're spending on time, whether it's high level strategy or low level tactics? Okay, the first one is green, which is for high level strategy. So for me personally, if it's things that I know can't be replaced by somebody else, or I don't want it to be replaced by somebody else, then it'll be green. So like you saw what I did earlier, shooting this video for me is, is strategic. Why? Because I don't want to give this up. I don't want to outsource it. I don't want somebody else to be doing the training. I want to be the person doing it. So therefore, it's strategy. I'm going to go number three before I mention what number two is. Number three is the tactical. Now, if that task is tactical in nature, I will actually color code it red. It is because if you are doing the tactical stuff, this is what gives you clarity on who it is you need to hire next. 
And if you are the CEO of a huge organization, that is when you want your team members to be doing this time study on themselves so that now they can offload their tactical stuff, take care of the strategic stuff and have the junior person take care of the tactical. But this is how you start being aware of how you're spending your time. Because at the end of each month, guess what? You can look, take a look at all of your tasks and all of the things that is red or, just my number two here, or yellow. What is a yellow? A yellow is a mix of these two things, tactical and strategic. And only you would know what is high level strategy, strategic for you. Now, right now, based on where your company is at, you could be the only person selling your product and that to you is strategic. But eventually know that you have to offload that so that you're working on the business and not in the business. Sometimes I might use other colors. So I might use orange for ideas. I might use pink color for uh, shooting videos because I shoot a lot of videos. So now when I go back into my personal board, instantly I can see exactly how I spent my time on whether I was working on the business or in the business. And that's how I level up in terms of deciding who should be my next hire, in terms of deciding the person that is coming in next. Or if I want to have an assistant to help another team member of mine that I'm thinking about promoting, that is how we will be taking a look at deciding who it is we need to hire that helps this person that's about to be promoted with the low level tactical so that this senior person can focus on the high level strategic. So this is how you'll utilize Trello with your personal stuff and not have it overwhelm you, but at the same time, manage a team. Now, I wanna give you one last hack that's gonna be super powerful. By the way, if you've liked what it is that we've been covering so far, uh, let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway is. Smash the like button, it does help this channel out a little bit. And if you're new to this channel, if you haven't already done so, if you want to be able to take your business to a whole new level, whether it is your personal sales, motivation, processes, be sure to subscribe for future videos just like this one. So one last hack that I want to be able to share with you is you've got to realize that in every single board, there is this settings that, has, that, that says email to board settings. And basically what this is, if I were to click on it, you'll realize that, first of all, I, I have to blank this email address out because this email address is literally going to give anyone on YouTube access to my personal board. Okay, so, so that can happen. But basically what this email is, it's a unique email that I can save to my address book and call it say Ping Jun's Trello board. And any given time, if let's say I see something on Facebook that gives me inspiration or idea and says, hey, that's pretty good. Or if I receive an email that says that's a certain task that I want to add to Trello, all I need to do is I can forward that email or forward that screenshot to this Trello board and the title of the email becomes a task. It becomes a card. So let's say I see this ad on Facebook that I feel, oh, I want to be able to create an ad like that. So I might take a screenshot of that, email myself, call it ad title number one. So now ad title number one becomes a card on Trello. So that way, Every single idea that I see on social media, every time I receive an email, all I gotta do is just forward to this unique Trello email. And every single time I do that, Trello automatically converts that task into a card that goes onto that specific board, right? Does that make sense? So that is literally how I handle this, this entire thing. I'm, I'm sure I might have missed a few things here or there. Let me know in the comments if there's a specific angle that you would like to find out in more detail. I could cover that in a future video. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is and if you found value. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel for future videos like this one. This is Ping Jun here and I'll see you in the next video.